Hello. In this video, I'm going to provide a short demonstration of probit regression using SPSS. And specifically, we will be using the drop down menus and using the generalized linear models option. So, before we uh, do that, let me just kind of tell you about the example and the source of this uh, demonstration. So, the example is based off of a presentation at this site right here, which is hosted by the Institute for Digital Research and Education at UCLA. So, it does have a number of resources, a lot of tutorials, um, and uh, demonstrations of various statistical packages. So, it's a great resource for anybody who's learning uh, various types of statistical analyses. And uh, so if you haven't already checked it out, you, you really should. So uh, the demonstration itself is based on the presentation on this site right here. And uh, most of the presentation is really relying on uh, sort of uh, syntax in order to generate uh, the output. But like I said, for my demonstration, I'm just going to focus in on using the drop down menus in SPSS. If you want a copy of the data set, you can click on this link right here. And also, uh, just before we get started, let me just say that I will include a link to this web page underneath the video description. So if you want to go there, there's a lot of uh, more information that will be provided on this particular page in terms of interpreting the output uh, that I can really provide in this particular um, video demonstration. So check it out. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start by taking a look at the data set itself. So this is what I had downloaded from that particular link. Each row represents a given student who, is in, who has applied for graduate school. And so basically a value of zero on the admit variable indicates that the student was not admitted to graduate school. A value of one indicates that the student was admitted to graduate school. The uh, predictors in the model are going to be GRE, top notch and GPA. So we're basically going to be predicting whether or not a student was admitted to graduate school. So we're trying to, to uh, model that. So GRE and GPA are both being treated as continuous uh, variables, predictor variables within the model. Top notch is a binary variable so we can include it uh, along with G GRE and GPA in the standard uh, using the standard covariates option uh, through the menu. But uh, basically it's coded zero for uh, that indicating that the student did not attend a top-notch university. One indicating that the student did attend a top-notch university. Okay, so let's walk through the steps. So we'll go to Analyze. We're going to go to Generalized Linear Models and click on this uh, right here. And so when this opens up, you'll see that we have different types of generalized linear modeling options. And one of them is going to be Binary Probit, which is over here. So you can see this is it right here. So I'm going to click on that. And next, I'm going to click on the Response tab and move my dependent variable over to the dependent variable box. And when I do, you'll see that uh, this highlights right here and this is just basically asking you know what what category do you want to serve as your reference category during your analysis so basically I have two options I can either say well the reference category would be uh, those students who uh, were not admitted to graduate school or those students who were and since I'm trying to really predict those students who were I'm going to set my reference category as those who weren't admitted to graduate school. So I'm going to click on reference category and you'll see that by default it uses the uh, last group category or the highest value which if I left it this way the reference group would be those that were admitted. So I don't want to do that. I actually want to uh, click on the next option which is first uh, which is the lowest value and I'll click on continue. Next we'll go to predictors and we'll move our predictor variables over to the covariates box. Next, we'll, uh, also let me just kind of note that you'll see up here it's got a factors box. So um, if you happen to have a factor variable like an ordered categorical variable uh, with uh, you know, more than two levels uh, or a nominal variable uh, uh, and you wanted to treat that variable as a factor, you could certainly move it over and it would be included uh, in the model as such. And basically the program would, would by default create a set of dummy variables in order to accomplish the modeling process. So we don't really have that situation. Uh, like I said, top notch basically is, um, is a categorical variable, but because it's binary, we can include it underneath the covariates option. Next, we'll click on model and we'll move our predictors over to the model box. 
under estimation we'll leave that everything the same statistics you know we could ask for exponential parameter estimates if we wanted to if we wanted to obtain odds ratios we can certainly do that as well so now let's click on OK and look at our output so within our output uh, we'll start up at the top right here and you can see that just some model information our DV was an admit variable uh, we're using uh, bina uh, binomial probability distribution link function as probe it right here. You can see that we get um, some basic uh, descriptive information on the on the, our variables. Scrolling down, you can see also that we have the omnibus test. This is basically uh, the likelihood ratio chi-square test. There's our degrees of freedom and p-value. And basically what this is doing is testing whether the model that contains our set of predictors represents a significant improvement in fit over an unconditional model with no predictors. So based on these results, this is significant, so that's indicating that our model containing the predictors represents a significant improvement in fit over the unconditional model. If we go down here and look at the parameter estimates, we can see right here we have the regression coefficients and uh, we have wall chi-square uh, tests which are basically being we're using uh, the, the, this particular test in order to test the significance of the regression coefficients the uh, null hypothesis for these is that the uh, population slopes would be equal to zero and then we have the significance level so these are all p-values for those as well and these this column right here is just containing odds ratios so let's just kind of do a quick walkthrough um, so with GRE, um, you can see right here that the regression slope is positive. And so what that would mean uh, is that with that positive slope, students who had higher GRE scores uh, were more likely to be admitted than those with lower GRE scores. And you can see that that predictor was statistically significant. We can see GPA right here uh, also had a positive coefficient and it was statistically significant. So that's going to indicate that students who had higher undergraduate GPAs were more more likely to be admitted to graduate uh, school than students with lower GPAs. Our top-notch variable was coded zero for did not attend a top-notch top -notch, uh, uh, institution as an undergraduate, one indicating that they did. So we have a positive coefficient right here. So just looking at the coefficient, that would indicate that students uh, attending a top-notch university were more likely to be admitted to graduate school. but uh, this, the p-value for that is 0.128, so that predictor within this model is not statistically significant. So overall, the results indicate that uh, as a set of predictors, uh, they do a better job of predicting the likelihood of being admitted to graduate school than um, a, an unconditional model or null model. And of the predictors, it looks like G, GRE and GPA uh, were contributing most to the likelihood of being admitted to graduate school, whereas top-notch uh, did not really contribute to the model. So if you want a more detailed exposition of the um, output, uh, again, you can go to this uh, page right here. Again, I'll make this link available underneath the video description so that you can go down and you can get more information on the components within the output. So that concludes this demonstration, and I appreciate you watching.